Well, good morning, church. It's great to kind of see you again. And uh, I've realised it's been a little while since I've been in front of a camera for the church. So thanks for allowing me to spend some time in your living room or wherever you are watching this and to be able to talk today. And I'm really going to pick up a little link from where we've seen our series go based out of Ruth over these last three weeks. So I just by the way, I just want to say thank you to Totti and Martin and Paul for delivering some really excellent thoughts and points. And if you're agreeing with that, put something in the, uh, in the chat right now. Just say thanks, guys, for doing that. And what I really want to do is link from that into uh, our series uh, going uh, over the next three weeks about how we believe God has put a mandate on us as a local church to go, to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to quote Matthew 28. Actually, you see these words in Acts chapter 1 and Matthew 28 like this. Let me read them to you. It says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus is talking to his disciples. So it's the last things he says before he returns to his Father in heaven. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And actually, really, alongside that, if you read back in Matthew 28, his account, very similar words, but just puts another slant on it, it says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore, go. Now, I want us to hang on to that word go, because really, that's the theme for the next three weeks. And I want to unpackage something of that in terms of what that means for our church for the rest of this morning as I, as I share together. You know, when Jesus left his disciples and returned to his father, he didn't leave them with a memory. He gave them a mandate. And folks, the day is coming when we will return to church and continue the burden that God has placed on us as the people of God at Emmanuel. But we're not here just to have a memory of what God has done. We have a mandate to fulfill the call of God upon us as a church. We, we are purpose-driven as a local community. You know, Jesus has always given the church his purpose. In Ephesians chapter 3, just some verses there that I'd love to read to you. And Paul writes these words to the church in Ephesus and he says these words, God graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God the creator of all things had kept secret from the beginning. Here's the point. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places. God has a purpose for his church. And he's not second guessing that right now. He's not having to run, run back to his ideas book. And because a pandemic has hit planet Earth, he's coming to think of something else to give the church to do. God is absolutely on message with his purpose for his church globally and for us locally. We need to understand that the church is far more than just a building. It's far more than just a meeting place on Sundays. As much as I'm looking forward to that day when we can meet face together and worship together in this place, that is not our purpose. That is uh, our privilege to come together like that. But it's meant to catapult us into a biblical community that has an impact with the grace of God in the world that God places us right now. Uh, let, let's just track that, shall we, uh, through the Bible? Because if you come back to the Old Testament to look at the purpose of God there, you'll see that when the children of Israel left Egypt, God put some things in place that created a focal place of worship and it was called a tabernacle. Really for me, that's a giant tent. That's why I love going on camping holidays because I believe that's the only way we can truly get back to the heart of God, going out and camping in 
intense. Now, I know you're going to disagree with me right there, and maybe I'm just over the top at that point. But actually, right at the start of the community of Israel's expression of worship, it was focused around something called the tabernacle. And if we look at that carefully, you'll see that the people of God were chasing the presence of God. Follow the story of Israel as they went through the wilderness and it was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire at night that would lead them and led them for 40 years as they journeyed around uh, the wilderness. And if you were, if you like, it was the people that were pursuing the presence of God and periodically they would uh, construct the tabernacle and spend time in a place worshipping him. You know, when the children of Israel came into the promised land and had their own place and uh, began to settle, the tabernacle then became the temple. And you'll read that through under the reign of King David and Solomon, particularly where the temple was, uh, was built. And the people, instead of chasing the presence of God, now began to spend time at the temple in the presence of God. They came to his presence. So from chasing God, they now came into his presence but when Jesus came and he gave the great commission to his disciples uh, as heralds to the rest of his church and went back to his father Acts chapter 2 we read the Holy Spirit came and uh, everybody was in it says in one accord in a room but when the power of God came I think it's 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 poignant to notice that such was the power of the presence of God that those disciples in the upper room spilt out into the upper streets. And the writer there, Luke, is writing uh, that account. He's writing that for a very specific reason, for us to understand that you can't contain the presence of God in a building any longer. The purpose of the church is for the people to become presence carriers into the world. Follow that story in Acts chapter 2, where people began to mock the Christians, or these, uh, these, these, new, these Jewish people that were, were Messiah followers, speaking in tongues, and declaring the praises of God. They mocked them, but Peter stands up and he explains what's going on. And suddenly there's this incredible move of God that sees 3,000 men actually added to the kingdom, this new church, because now the presence of God was being pushed out of a space into the hearts of people. Now that's that's the purpose of going with the presence of God. So we have a vision as a church, Emmanuel, and I want to spend just a, maybe just some moments really unpackaging that, really. And some of you if, you, if you're just remembering and keeping on message through 2020, we galvanized a lot of our preaching uh, around this word strong, putting some things in place that meant we were strong for that year. That planning went on the year before. We didn't even know that the pandemic was coming, but actually it seems that God has set us up for just the right t- time. And to he set up with putting systems in place, structures in place, appointing people to certain positions, actually making sure that our structures were good. And actually that has really helped us through 2020. And in our hearts as a leadership team, we really believe that in 2021, we're galvanizing around another word. And it's this word, go. And Jesus commissioned his disciples to go, not to go back to the temple or go back to the synagogue, but to go into the world. And he says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the ends of the earth. Go is not just about sending missions teams to other countries or doing short-term missions programs, but in the everyday aspect of our lives, go is about being presence carriers wherever God takes us. Being able to be something of the reflection of the grace and the love of God in our workplace, in our families, how we conduct ourselves in the front of others, how we react to adverse circumstances, how we use what God places in our hands. The heart of go means that we carry the presence of God into all kinds of arenas. There are some things that we've done in our church over this last year that they they may seem physically fixed things, but they have a go heart 
behind them. If I was able to take the cameras today and turn them around so you could look at our room, it'd look a little bit different to perhaps what you would remember the last time you came into church. We have lighting up and a different kind of set here and cameras all around the room and a, and a, and a, and a production assistant called Paul Thurstad delivering this program today. It's a little bit different, but we've invested in this equipment so that in a time of constriction in our world, we can still demonstrate a heart of go and communicate the love and the grace of God through the medium that we have before us, through our YouTube channel, through our social media. Because, why? Because, because this heart of go is very much a part of all that we are. If I could take that camera and just walk around to, so some of you will know where our kitchen is in our minor hall. For some of you I know you don't even know what I'm talking about because you've joined our church but not yet actually visited our building and one day I believe that you will or I hope that you will but actually I could show you our kitchen it's completely renovated and we spent a bit of money on that that's not just about being fixed and just tarting it up for for some reason we have a heart of go behind that uh, um, refurbishment so that when we're able to return we're able to exercise our feeding program for our life bread to another level actually so that we can run an after schools program and have young people people coming after school into a safe place and grab a hot meal while they perhaps do their homework and, and we can just be with them for a time. All kinds of things, that even our fixed things, have a heart of go behind them and other things that we are doing as a local church so that we as a community have this heart of go to touch our world. Do you know the church was created for growth? It was created to go. The church was never meant to be static. We were never meant to be static with our faith. We were meant to be a people that have a heart that reaches out in some way with the love of God. If we look at the stats of church, sort of uh, countrywide or even culture-wide in the West, we could be forgiven for thinking that the church is in a crisis point. It's been estimated that a thousand people a week are leaving mainstream church, that relevant evangelism is being substituted with just comfortable Bible studies so that we don't confront or offend people in our pluralist world. For many, it's just becoming safer to look inward rather than look outward. It's becoming safer to stay rather than go. But that is not the heart of God and neither is it the real picture of church worldwide. Uh, we may see that in the West, but actually, if you look at the stats broader than that, there's some really encouraging stats. I looked this up as I was preparing this little talk today, um, and there's a, there's a research group called Lifeway, the Lifeway Research Group, and it published an article in 2019. So these are bang up to, to date statistics, and you can go and check that out online, Lifeway Research Group. Look at the seven surprising facts about the church worldwide. It says that Christianity is growing uh, at a faster rate than the world population. Currently there's some two and a half billion Christians in the world. And actually it goes on to say that Pentecostals and Evangelicals are growing the fastest and they are still picking up speed in their growing worldwide. That atheism has peaked and there are less atheists, confessed atheists in the world than there were in 1970. That the centre, this is an interesting stat, the centre for Christianity has moved to the global south away from the global north where it used to be. Now the centre for Christianity has moved into the southern part of the world and that the percentage for the unevangelized people groups is shrinking. In other words, uh, the church with its message of grace and love is reaching more and more people as a percentage, uh, not just by numbers as a whole. I find those figures incredibly encouraging. That's why I believe that God is not scratching his head, wondering what to do. That's why I believe the church is not irrelevant. But here we are 2,000 years after it was planted. Its message is just as vital, just as powerful. If you agree with any of this stuff, please put something in the chat right now and I'll see it uh, when I view this on Sunday. Please say something because I believe that God is up to something in his world with his heart and his love for, for the people, for humankind. Thirdly, the church has always been given a purpose. God has only ever had one purpose, and that's to reconcile us to God. Everything we do, 
must have that in view, must have this reconciliation with God message in view. Evangelism is at the heart of all we do because it's the heart of all that God does. There may be changes to how we do stuff. So we're in that right now. Actually broadcasting out on YouTube is very different from actually gathering together face to face on a Sunday. There may be different ways of doing that, but our heart is to reach out to people however we can. And we are seeing just with our own church connections being made through YouTube, people coming in, joining some, uh, some of our Life Connect groups, people that I've not had the privilege of meeting face to face yet but actually have been caught by something that's been said or they're curious about some of the things that we're talking about and they want to connect and if that's you please I want you that you are so welcome thank you thank you for making yourself known and you are warmly welcome to be a part of this church community here that's kind of based in South East London but seems to be reaching out further and further. I'm really encouraged, by the way, Georgina, for your connecting with us every week online from Trinidad. The Lord bless you. Um, it's just great to have so many people connecting with us in the way that you do. God only ever has one instrument to bring about his love, and that's the church. That's what we are, who we are collectively. It's people that call people to reconciliation, not legislation, not force, not circumstance, no substitute exists for a personal testimony of the love and the grace of God in somebody's lives. Our, our projects and our programs, they're good things, but they are only ever there to assist us with the purpose of going and sharing Jesus in some relevant way. God has many avenues to bring about his purposes and his plans. Ephesians 3.10 says these words. His church is to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all. That's the phrase I want us to grab a hold of. To display his wisdom in its rich variety to all. There are many different testimonies. There are many different songs of grace. If I had the time, I'd share some that I've just heard this week that are transformational stories of how God has unequivocally, powerfully intervened in people's world in, in miraculous ways. There's such a variety of stories to share where God has just shown up and those people are carrying the presence of Jesus wherever they go. Do you know, your personal distinctive as someone who loves Jesus is usable and unique something you should not be ashamed to share or to be you have a story to tell God has placed you in a context on purpose and actually I just feel I need to say this more than just words off of an iPad right now I feel the Holy Spirit is just speaking through me to you right now that God is reminding you that he smiles over your life you have a personal story of all that you've been through that God is going to use that is uniquely shaped around your experience Experiences that will touch the lives of others. And there just may be that somebody's still on the edge of their calling in God, wondering, is this the way I should go? Is this, is this the thing I should say? And God is saying, I am standing with you, waiting to walk with you as you go under my authority. I don't know if that's for anybody right now, but just let that be carried in your heart and have the courage to step out in faith and go in the way that God is leading you with your unique story and testimony of grace. Don't let anyone despise your story. God has an audience that he wants silenced and he'll use your testimony to do it. So it says in Revelations, they overcame the evil one by two things, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And your story can silence the enemy. That cannot be argued with by anybody because you know your story in God is true. The rulers and the authorities in heavenly realms are silenced by the power of you speaking up, going and being who God has called you to be. We overcome those things by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So here's my challenge. Can... Two million Christians in the UK 
reach 65 million people. Think, well, that's a bit overwhelming. How on earth are we ever going to do that? Can a few thousand Christians in Lewisham reach the couple of hundred thousand people or so that live in our borough and around that? How, how is that po possible? Well, let me just share you another, with you another verse um, that may just bring a better light on what is seemingly daunting opposition. It says these words in Deuteronomy. One shall chase a thousand and two shall put 10,000 to flight. Oh, I don't know about you, but I do so love God's economics. You see, if we write that and we, we had the courage to write one shall chase a thousand, maybe then our faith might reach up to say and two could slay 2,000. But the Bible doesn't say that. If it's one is a thousand, when two come together, it's 10,000 that are put to flight. Let me give you a practical illustration that will anchor that right down. When Genghis Khan came to conquer the known world, he had a small army, but it conquered the entire world in the wake of the demise of the Roman Empire. He united tribal leaders in Mongolia and he conquered the lands from Hungary to China. That is a vast area of land. How did he do that? Well, he understood the power of people. His army knew what his army could do. And I wonder, people of God, if we would allow that revelation here at Emmanuel to just affect our spirits and you know, we are part of the plan of God. We know what we can do, not what we can't do. There is nothing too hard for our God. We need to understand and remember the purpose of the church is outside of itself. It's to be presence carriers into our world. So maybe God is calling you to do something for the benefit of others that are not yet part of our church community, just to bless them, to pray over people, to intercede for people, to speak kind words of grace, to be generous with your finances to others, to spend time for those that are, are broken hearted, to just be available to those that feel lonely, just in the world that God has placed you. Could you have a go heart that carries the love of God wherever he takes you. Don't allow yourself to be um, overwhelmed by what you think others might think, being people driven. Don't allow your personal agendas to eclipse God's agenda for your life. And don't allow a small mindset to overwhelm what God can do with you. I can't give you all this story just yet, but I will do. But I just need to say that God, God has never finished with me either. <laughs> He's doing things in my life. He's stretching me all the time. And when we take little steps of faith, and, and, and me and my family have taken some little steps of faith, nothing to worry about, don't worry, don't misread anything into that. But just in our own walk, taking the little step of faith, thinking how on earth are we going to see these ends meet? As we take a little step of faith, trusting not the magnitude of our circumstances being against us, but the bigness of our God. The moment we do that again, we see the breathtaking provision, the breathtaking guidance of Almighty God in our lives as a family. I tell you, don't limit God with a small mindset. Just say, God, wherever you send me, I will go. There's a songwriter, most of you haven't even heard of him, uh, but hopefully some will have done, a guy called Keith Green from the 70s and the early 80s, who was a very provocative Christian songwriter. I love some of the lyrics of his song because I'm provoked by them. Uh, it challenges me. And he says these words in one of his, his uh, songs, a line that I want to leave you with. It says this, it says, Jesus commands us to go. It should be the exception if you stay. And I've, I've never forgotten that line. And so can I speak to you as Emmanuel? Can I speak to you as people that are watching in on this channel? Can I speak to you if you're visiting with us? Actually, if you know God, if you know Jesus, could you, allow, could you position yourself to say, God, what is it you want me to do? If you're a part of this community, is there some way that you can connect with us in some way, particularly as we move back towards meeting together, mobilizing ourselves corporately, God, how can you use me? How can I know that go mentality in my heart so that I can be a presence carrier of God into the world that God plants us? 
I hope that catches your heart today. I hope you're catching this as we unfold through the rest of this year. Listen out for that word go because it's going to affect everything we do, everything we say. We are bringing some great projects to you over the course of the rest of this year that have this go heart behind them. You begin to see some of those things unfold over the next few weeks. But in your own personal walk this week, why don't you make yourself available and say, God, where is it I'm meant to step out in faith and go to be a presence carrier for your sake? Well, that's my time gone today. I'm going to pray in just a moment. Uh, but I just, as, as I am praying, would you just surrender your heart to him and allow God just to really speak personally into your world right now. And actually, if you're visiting with us today, and you've never actually come into a a personal awareness of what it means to follow Jesus, we'd love to hear from you. You can just email us in. We'd love to sort of connect with you. If you want to find out more, uh, you can put something in the chat if you want us to contact you. Wouldn't do that without your permission. But we would love to introduce you to the person that's made such a difference in our lives as people that follow the presence of God. We'd love to spend time with you if you'd like us to do that. Church, can we pray together? Allow his Holy Spirit to lead us. Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your presence in this place. We want to thank you for your mandate that sits on our heart as a church. We want to thank you that we have the privilege of being presence carriers in this world. And in this season when our world is so needy, when people are still having to navigate the difficulties of a lockdown and what it means to go through a pandemic, for those that that have lost loved ones, I pray you would help us as a community of people to have a heart that looks out outward that looks into the world that you've planted us have a spirit that says we will go wherever you take us help us to be the presence carriers of God wherever we go help us to be sensitive to the leading of your spirit so that people will see Jesus living in us and begin to turn their hearts towards you father we thank this in Jesus mighty name and everybody said amen great to see you can't wait to see you face to face. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. What a great word that was. I hope you feel touched, blessed, and I hope it encouraged you in some way or the other. And also guys, if you want to stay connected throughout the week, we also have our Life Connect groups. Um, I believe all the details are below me again. So plug in, get connected, and be encouraged throughout the week. I hope you've enjoyed today's service. It's been a blessing to me, I know that. And I look forward to seeing you all, hopefully, in the near future. God bless and ciao.